Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lee. In my previous video, I've shown you how to use Docker to install Keycloak and some authentication flows. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to start using Microsoft Azure AD. Let's get started. First of all, let me open my browser. Go to my blog, this post. As you can see, I've got screenshots for all the steps here. If you need a reference after watching this video, please go back to this blog post. It's got more information and some hyperlinks to the official documentation. If this is your first time to go to um, Azure, you can log in with your current Microsoft account or, or you can just create a new one. In my case, I've already created my account, so I'm just logging in here. The registration process is pretty simple. After you successfully register and log in, you will be redirected back to this home page. But you will notice you can't do anything because you don't have a subscription as yet. So you can click here and then create a free subscription. After the subscription has been done, we can start creating a um, Active Directory. So um, I've got this icon here. If you don't have it, you can just search Active Directory here. We are going to create a, uh, a user and a group. You should see your account listed under the user here, and we are going to create a new user now. So for the username part, I'm going to use demo at this domain here. And for the name part, we just do demo user, first name demo, last name user. And for the password, I don't see the point to um, create a password here because the first time you log in, you still need to create a new password. So I will just use the auto-generated password here. Uh, I will save it on Sublime Test. Okay, and then we can create this user. Next, I'm going to create a group. New group. So for the group name, I will just call it demo group. And group description will be just for demonstration. Now we can select the members here. I'll just uh, search for the demo user. Select, create. Okay, that's all set for the active directory part. Let's go back to the home page. The next step, I'm going to register an OpenID Connect application. So we just click this icon. If you don't have it, you can just search it from here. New registration. So I'm going to give a name, OIDC demo, and supported account type. Um, I'm just leave it as a single tenant, uh, the default value. So if you want to know the differences, you can go back to my blog post. I've got it here, and there is a hyperlink uh, to the official documentation, so you can take a look. Um, and for the redirect URI, I'm going to select the platform as web, and URI as HTTP local host call back. Then I can register. After the app is created, we will be redirected to this page and we can see there is an application ID, which is the client ID you will use for all the authentication flows. And there is a directory tenant ID. This is the uh, ID um, tied to your subscription. So um, for Azure, um, you've got this tenant ID on your um, OpenID Connect um, discovery directories. So if you want to know what your directory looks like, you can click this endpoints button. So you've got everything here. For example, this is the OpenID Connect metadata um, directory. If we go there, you can see your token endpoint. You can see your JWK um, endpoint. There is an authorization endpoint, which is here. So everything you know will be listed here. All right, so let's go to the next step. We are going to change the token to V2. So we click Manifest and change the access token acceptor version from now to 2. Uh, Microsoft has two um, token interface. The first one is V1 and the second one is 2. So we want to use um, V2. Um, and the next step, we are going to create a client secret. If you have watched my Kiklo uh, video before, you know after we create a new client, a uh, client secret is created automatically. For Azure AD, um, it's a little bit different. You need to create a secret uh, manually. So let's click new client secret and give it a name, demo secret. Um, it expires in six months. That's the default. You can change to whatever you like. 
add. So this is your client secret. Please make sure you write this down because you can only see it once. So after it's created, you can see it. Otherwise, it's gone. Um, and then the next step is to assign some permissions. Let's go to API permissions now. The reason we need to assign permission is that when your user log into your application, let's say it's a single page application, right? They click the button, they will be redirect back to Microsoft for login. And in the login page, they will see they need to give consent for your application to request some user information. In our case, we need the open ID permissions. So that's why we need to come here and add the open ID um, permissions. So we just go to Microsoft Graph, uh, delegated permissions. Um, it's here, but you can search open ID um, to find it and we can just add permissions. There are two methods to give consent to the app. Um, the first method is the user to accept the uh, permission request when they log in the first time. And the second way is you can click this grant admin consent for the default directory button. So what this means is that um, we just assume everyone in, in our um, active directory um, has already given their consent. In this demo, I'm not going to use this option because I want to show you this screen. Uh, after that, we are all set. We can try some authentication flows. So um, I'm not going to use curl today. Um, I'm going to use Insomnia Collections instead. It's much easier. So let me open Insomnia. And then we can just create and put the URL here. Fetch and imports. You can see there is an Azure here. Uh, we put some um, environment variable, client ID, and we, we've got that, client secrets, and we need to attain an ID as well. So let's go back to our app here, and we need to know the username. So I need to go back to um, active directory here, go to user here, let me copy that and paste here. I don't worry about the password too much at this stage because the first time you log in, you need to change the password anyway. So that's done. Um, you can start sending requests for client credential now uh, because client credential is a service to service flow. So normally you don't need a user here. So you can get the token here with no problem. And you will notice there is a password flow, which you need to pass in your username and password. It doesn't work right now, even if you have the password, because we haven't signed our consent yet. We're going to use the authorization code flow here to get the uh, consent done. So we just need to, let me enlarge this a little bit. And we click fetch token. And then we put in our username and the password which is the initial password the app up, uh, generated. So we need to create a new password here. Give me one second. I'll just paste the new password here. And now I just choose skip for now. So here is the permission request that I talk about. Uh, we want to accept this time. So you can see um, I've got the refresh token, ID token, and access token here. So now I can put my um, password here. Done. So we can use the password flow as well. Let's have a look. No problem. As you can see, my password flow is working. So let's have a look the um, authorization code flow here. What we've got is open ID scope. Of course, this is open ID, so we need this scope. And offline access. Um, this is needed if you want to have a refresh token profile. So the profile will actually have some additional information of the user signing in. And the email claim will give you an email address of that user. Um, I'm going to use password um, for demonstration because it's easier. So let's just go and grab the ID token first. So if I go to open my terminal, You can see here the name of the user, the preferred username, and OID. This is coming from um, the profile um, of scope. If we remove profile or remove offline access, remove email, 
and hit send, we still get two tokens because um, the refresh token is not given now. And we check this token again. You can see there is no username. So all the information are coming from um, the name. So all the information like name, prefer name, OID is coming from the profile score. Let's put it back. See again. All right, no problem, you can see here. And if we want the email, there are two methods to add email claim to your ID token. The first method is to add email scope to your um, request. So let's send, got a token here. Go back to our terminal. You can see email is here. Previously, we don't have it. The second method to get the email claim on your ID token is to add them as the optional claim to your um, profile scope. So we just change here to profile and then we will go back to Azure to change the claims. Let's come here, app registration, our app, token configurations. So we can add optional claim to the ID token. And what I want to add is the family name, given name and email address. Okay. And if we click add, you will get this prompt for the first time. It just telling you, you need to use open ID and profile scopes to get this information. Let's just take that and add. After that, we can come back to our insomnia and remove that and just send our request multiple times. Let me just um, try again. Finally, we've got email here, family name, given name, all on the ID token with the profile scope. So this is how you can just request additional claims on your ID token. The last thing I want to show you is the access token. As you can see, the ID token, it is version two, right? But if we take a look at the um, access token, we can see that the access token is version 1.0. So this will create some problems with some applications. So the application only supports V2, but because access token is V1, you will get an error. To force Microsoft to issue V2 tokens, we can do it by adding a um, special scope, which is client ID slash dot default. If we try again, as you can see, the size has changed. So if we check again, all right, so now it's V2. So if the application you're using only supports V2 token, this is the method and this is the scope you need to put um, to force Microsoft to use the V2 token. All right, so that's all I want to show you today. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.